If she had only been ugly, we would still Bobby Lee. We have Bobby Lee today. Yeah. Bobby, great to see you, man. Thanks, man. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Hey, man Jamie, you know up? Jamie Masada, the owner of the club? You? Now, thank you very much for dressing up for our podcast. You have beautiful shoes. <laughs> you look nice. <laughs> what, what were you nice? About a third of a second? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling him nice. Thank you very Start much. Start cutting you, up his he shoes. He always looked like a slob. Look at the have nice. Get away from him. Don't touch the... the, the <laughs> no, I'm just saying, look at the have nice shoes. Don't touch the for guests. Change. Just because he owns the club, he thinks he owns the club. <laughs> I know. Hey man. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm just. I'm gonna talk to this guy right here. Right. You just sit right. there. All right. All right. So, um, thanks for having me on your podcast, Bobby. Is, uh, I'm having a good time. Your, your stand up is improving. <laughs> Thank every you time so much. See, what what do you what are you most having the most fun doing besides babes? Uh, no, I I, I, I just kind of like I um. I wanted to get off the road, man. I was on the road for like after I was on a Mad TV, and then after that. No one in LA would hire me for any kind of acting Why? job. I don't know. I just dried up. You know Jeez. what I mean? There was another Asian uh, flavor of the month, and so Johnny they used you? whatever, whoever it is. Why do and, you have to name the guy? Yeah, you don't have to name guys. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. It was a bunch of guys. They, then, now he looks like he's pouting. Yeah. And no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so I did the road for like five years, pretty much straight. You know what I mean? Just I, I'd yeah. go out three weeks out of the month. And so now I needed a break, so now I'm just doing other things here. Well, what, why, why are you so much more popular now than you were two years ago? What kicked in? You think I am? Oh, Do, are I'm you being real? real? Bobby, we've been going on back to back for five years, yeah, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah. You go first or I go first. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see the reaction of the crowd. They're laughing already. Yeah. Last week at the con- I think what it is is um, something's hit. I mean, I is it know. the dictator? No. I don't know. One of the girls was. That's what I was saying. She was talking about. How, she said you were the funniest thing in the dictator. No, no. no I mean, I, I was think in he it. lost weight. He lost weight. He lost weight. Nothing to do gonna, with it. What the hell's that going to do with reaction? Look how funny that guy is. Look how thin. You know what? You know what? I. You know what? Can I just tell you what it is? I think it's this: is that, you know, when I was on Mad TV, it was generally kids watching it, like high school kids, and those kids just kind of grew up and are yeah. now at the clubs, you know. Sure. So it's like, I think that has a lot to do with it. In fact, I'm on a new show. The, the animal called Animal Practice on and NBC. He's the best, the best, the best. Don't show. say that. And um, it's a great ensemble cast. But I know, like the people that are involved in the show, were fans. You know what I mean? So that's, I think that's th- nice to go into that environment. Yeah, I mean, because you could then you go in and you and, and when you read for them, it's a different feeling. It's like, you know, usually you, you wait in those like metal folding chairs for three hours. Yeah. You walk in, they don't know who you are. They look at your resume and they look back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is uh, yeah, Bobby, yeah. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Yeah, and then they, after you're done, they're kind of like, all right, well, thank you. And you just kind of want to say, no, 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 I waited for three hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I worked on this and you're treating me like I'm w- like everyone else. And I don't, the worst thing, Bobby, is... It doesn't feel good. You know, when they thank you, the more they thank you, the more you have less, the less you have a chance of getting the part. The more pronounced, you know, <laughs> yeah, the bigger yeah. the thank, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you for wasting your time like yeah. that. Yeah, when they say well, nothing, you got it. Yeah. Right, they're like... They're like looking, oh, I didn't think you got it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, I got lucky, and I'm on this thing, and, you know, hopefully... You know, Dan booked one on NBC, which is great, and... And Chris has one on NBC. Yeah. Chris D'Elia's on it. NBC, we got to be rooting for NBC this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, and Bob Greenblatt, he's the president of NBC. He's he used to work in here on the Comic Strip Live with us. Oh yeah, what did he yeah. do? He was on a Fox guy. He was a Fox guy. He loves stand up comedy. He loves stand up comedy. I, I think all of the, all the networks, NBC is more stand up friendly than. I mean, if you look at all the other shows. They, there are no stand ups on. Well, there. what's yeah. your favorite thing to do? Still, I, I just wanted to get back to that question. What do you have the most fun doing? I like doing all of it. I mean, I. I well, no. The, I, 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 the thing is, is that, you know, I don't. I, I'm just one of those guys. I don't feel like I do anything that great. Yeah, I still have that low self-esteem, so That's, I just feel like I'm always like learning. You know what I mean? So whatever. Like if I'm in a situation, whether it be stand up or acting or whatever it might be. And I'm scared a little bit still because yeah. I get scared still. I think that's a good place to be. So I like to do everything because I want to learn how to do it. You know, well, low self-esteem generally is so much more fun, so much funnier than high self-esteem. The only one I know who has high self-esteem and is at all funny is Seinfeld. Yeah. You know, but other than that, there's nobody that pompous kind of attitude. Like Eddie Murphy is is, is pompous. Yeah. And he yeah. kind of lost his his mojo. 
Yeah. As a, of course, he, he ripped off uh, Pryor and 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 uh, Cosby so much, and he's such a terrific actor. But yeah. But this low self esteem. Don't lose that. I think it's funny. Well, I don't think I'll ever lose it. I think I just I, I mean I have mirrors and well, stuff. Well, you shouldn't. You're right about yourself. How do you figure I'm out? I'm kidding. Do you have... No, I'm kidding. Don't turn on me. I'm not turning on you. I would never <laughs> turn on you. Listen, Dom. You have to understand that. You're like one of the guys that I swear, and I swear to God from the bottom of my heart, where I can't even believe that you know who I am. Because when I was a kid, I used to watch like, I used to stay up, and we had HBO, right? And I used to see it, the Dangerfield, you know, specials, you know, Hollywood Shuffle. We actually owned, you know what I mean? TV. So, yeah, the, the movie that he was in. You did own it? Hollywood Shuffle. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. did Hollywood Shuffle. I didn't was a movie. know. I said he, he came from poor family. The poor I'm family so, can have a movie. I didn't know you could <laughs> buy a TV. I didn't have any. I'm they, sorry. They thought you lived on a continue, boat. Continue. Continue. In a boat off. Of, please, Bobby. Continue. I didn't live like in Cambodia in the killing fields. I mean, it was like, <laughs> you know, my, my dad wasn't Pol Pot. You know what I mean? We were living in a shack. I lived in America where we had TVs, man. You did? Okay. Yeah, man. I, I, I don't know okay. why I would. you would even think otherwise. Because uh, the way you look. <laughs> he looks like he was poor. I look like I'm poor. No, I mean, I don't know. I, I, do, I just have a picture of... Why you do you know? even have me in your building? Because I, I walk you. in, you go, you let me in, you know what I mean? You give me a hug and stuff. Because, but because that's because love, what you're doing? Yes. Okay, well, whatever, man. I, don't, I guess I don't know what love is. Well, no, he's... he's but well, is it bad he, to have that psychotic. kind of image? He's psychotic. It's bad to have that kind of I image? I don't even know what you just said, so let's move Jamie, on. Jamie, so you are, without a doubt, the worst co-host... <laughs> I've never seen in any field of show business. I've never seen you. First of all, you go after Joe Rogan after a minute. Joe Rogan, who I love very much, can be a little bit feisty. Yeah. You, he attacks him about, you know, telling him that Dane didn't steal material, one of these things. Just fucking ease into it. Like you said before, ease into it. Tosh told me, he goes, somebody called him. They hadn't talked to him in 10 years and asked him for a favor. Ease into it. Call him one time. Say how you doing. Yeah, I got yeah, your yeah. number. I wanted to say hi. Yeah. And then the fifth time you call him, let me buy you dinner. I want to talk. I want to ask you for something. Boom. But you don't fucking go into. You know, you you don't ease into things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at the way you attacked I'm, him. I'm sorry. You were I didn't him. I'm sorry. Did you see his face? He was so sad. I'm sorry. Like you were just raped or something. I'm okay. I'm, we didn't rape you. We're all good. We're no, family. I mean he's he's teaching me what I'm doing wrong. No, I don't the thing know. is, is that, yeah, you do know. Yes, you do know, Jamie. No, I don't know. Well, how I you, how do you get the balls to judge who passes here if you don't know? You no, know, but I, I look at feelings. him. I look at him. I saw a lot of movies. I think he lived in a shack. He didn't have a TV. Honest to God, that's the way I look Why at him. Why would you. you think that? What kind because of I didn't. Is... I don't have that mental capacity. Are you? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> dr are you on drugs? <laughs> do you do drugs? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, are you, are you on meth? Are you seriously? How long? When's the last time you slept? <laughs> you're out of your mind right now. You no, are. You are. You're yeah, you're, you're like going crazy. Tom, I swear to God, I look at him. I, you, didn't you see a lot of Cambodian movie, Vietnam? Movie? Oh, yeah, I always go to Cambodia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever see? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I. I go. I come home. Honey, is there any Cambodian movies on today? I'm in the mood. Well, no, just La Laotian? No, oh, not another Laotian movie. Yeah. But, but don't you see all of those Cambodian, all of them, they live in a shack. They don't have no TV. In a, well, all. that would naturally make sense that Bobby was one of them. Yes, that's that. Is, I'm Korean. You know that. <laughs> okay. You know I'm Korean. You, know, he doesn't know. I saw, I saw, you, you don't even know that? I saw Korean and Cambodian. They are the same. They're not the same. All right? not. Two different cultures. Like yeah, saying, I could, yeah. Ecuadorians and Peruvians are the same. Yeah. Aren't they the same? No, they're from different countries. That's why they're called something different yeah oh, oh, okay you're, you're an different. idiot oh i'm sorry you're different okay it was a fly i wasn't trying to hit no you. there wasn't a fly there you're losing your mind dude that's no, meth oh, that's a meth behavior dude when is when you just you kind of <laughs> invisible things which it's so sad dude I, what's sad this is an intervention i think please, please. all right let me just don't, don't interrupt don't. i'm gonna talk to dom so what were you no so anyway when i so I and i i really do mean i'm a huge fan of yours do you want to turn the chair forward? yeah i'm a huge fan of yours and um Thank you, Bob. I, I, no, I, I'm honest, God, and I um, even like li like when I see you in things like the Big Lebowski and stuff, I go oh, there, you know, dumb. And then and then when I'm around you, 
you know, I just feel like I can't believe that he even knows who I am. So thank you for having me on your podcast and stuff. You're kidding. I love you. I mean, no, you know, I know, but I j- I'm proud of you. I mean, I don't want to make it the Sammy Maudlin show, but I love that. <laughs> I love that reaction you get now. I mean, something happened in the last year and a half where the audience has really clicked. I'm talking I'm not talking about you doing well. Because that you you know that you have to work for. Yeah, yeah. But just the acknowledgement you've been getting. Yeah. They're laughing already. I mean, it's great. It, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. Now you have to live up to a different way. You know. I, well, I guess, but I just you know I literally just wake up and I just wake up and I just show up to a club and I just do my thing and then if somebody wants to give me an acting job I just do that and you know you just you can't live. I'm not like your other comedians where I have this big career plan. I just wake up. And someone says, you're supposed to be here, and I'll just show up, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to survive, bro. Can, can I ask you no, a question? No, you cannot. <laughs> no, no, please no more. don't. No questions. No questions. How about no this? For five minutes, you don't say nothing. <laughs> okay? Oh, that's like a now. I don't care. It doesn't, no, because it's just a trick that he does. <laughs> He's not really, ooh, you know what I mean? <laughs> using, so let's just talk. He's using that mouse-like face to make us feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, I'm not saying nothing. You just said I something. I don't trust anybody where their lip color is the same color as their face, as if they have no lips, and that's what he has. He's like a Muppet or something. You know what I mean? Just felt. You know what I mean? No, 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 you don't say nothing. Let's go. Uh, are you addicted to uh, video games? I am. I had heard that. You never talked. I never hear you talk about it, but somebody told me you play like... No, because it's embarrassing because it's like I, um, I'm 40. <laughs> You know what I mean? So my, 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 the way I live my life never changed since I was in my teenage years. Like, Great. I wake up, I have this obsession with Elmer's glue. You know the glue? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, I, you know, as a kid, I used to put it on my body, and I let it dry, and I would peel it off. Uh-huh. So my house has, I'm not even kidding, hundreds of bottles of Elmer's glue, because I still put Doesn't it on my body. Does that give you blood poisoning? I don't know what it does, but, you know what I mean? I feel good. But anyway, high on it. No, shut up. I love you. Well, I'm sorry. All right, but all right, and the, so and then I play. You got four, four yeah, more minutes. Yeah, four more minutes. I play um, role-playing games on Xbox, like Skyrim, anything that Bethesda does. I like. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Mass Effect fan. I love. Um, I also play FIFA a lot because I'm a big soccer fan. Also, are you? Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm huge. That's my number one sport in oh. soccer. I, I'm an Arsenal fan. I like all the sports that uh, black men dominate. Black men dominate in soccer. Really? Yeah, there's some, yeah, they're be, the, be, the best players are... No, there's a mix. Mix again. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he can't stop. He can't even stop. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and so I, I, I act like a kid. I think that's why I always attract girls that are way younger than I should be going out with, you know? What do you mean should be? What? Not, you if know, they like, want to go out, then you go out with them. Yeah, but the thing here's the thing, though. I act like a teenager, but the knowledge in my head is more adult. Like, I, I still listen to Rachmaninoff. You know what I mean? You know, I know, like, I'm a Kurosawa fan. And girls that are 22, they don't know that stuff either. So it's hard. It's like, they're like, let's go watch Magic Mike. You know what I mean? I love Magic Mike. I know. It's a good movie. And then <laughs> I'm like, I'd la- rather see, you know what I mean, the good, the bad, and the ugly again or whatever. But well, don't go out with them. I know. Just take them home. I'm going to die alone, I think. No, you're not. Are you addicted to sex? I have, I have porn erectile dysfunction. Porn or what? I have porn erectile dysfunction. What do you mean? You can't get up? No, it's an actual medical thing. You can't get it up watching That's porn? That's not what I'm saying. Erectile dysfunction. Porn. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what it is. Can I tell you what it yeah, is? Yeah, please. I okay. think I know, but go. Shall I tell him? No, you sh- don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, he's like a little kid now. Shall I tell him? Yeah, tell me what you think it is. <laughs> tell, Jamie, tell me, tell no, me no, what you think it is. You said that. There's I have two more minutes. I have two more minutes. No, I want to know. I, no, I'm going to break the minutes. silence. You tell me what you think. The porn cone of silence. Uh, he, anytime he watch porn, he get erected. No, if it's a dysfunction, it'll be the opposite. Yeah. No, yeah, no that's, you're wrong. He's wrong? Yeah. So now you shut up and let me explain it. Okay. Okay? Ooh. Thanks I mean, I love you, but you're around here oh, at the old cast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Bobby. All right. Kids from the age of 18 to 26 years old right now, a lot of them have it. And it's actually an epidemic. Because, you know, back when I was a kid, the only pornography I could get was like that, you know, half of a Hustler magazine that was underneath a rock on the, in the park. You know what I mean? And you'd pick it. It was half of a picture of a vagina. And you go like, you know what I mean? Now... 
kids have the internet porn, you which is... To, you didn't have to go like this. I know what you meant. <laughs> oh, you did? Thanks for telling but me. But I have my own side. I do this side. That's why. You know what I mean? I don't do this. I do this side. Yeah, anyway, yeah, okay, so. let's move on. And, um, Let me get that image out of my head. <laughs> I, have to eat, I have to eat later. Okay. <laughs> and so now kids that are like, you know, inundated with this porn on, you know, they can get anything they want. Yeah. Have a difficult time when they're with a real woman getting erect. Ooh. Because it messes with the synapses in their brain or whatever. Right, right. So f- what I'm trying to do now is not watch it at all, which I ha- I don't. Oh, okay. I don't watch because it. You, I don't a masturbate. Real girl, on do- real girl wouldn't turn you on at that time. Well, I was in Toronto about a year ago, and something really sad happened. I had this girl you know, in my hotel room, and she got naked, and I couldn't get erect. And I, I literally almost cried. It was, I was scared. And then I did, you know, I, I were you were you drinking or anything? No, I, I've been sober for ten years. You don't you know? do anything, do you? No, I've been sober for a very long time. And so I, you know, talked to, you know, I mean, a my porn. sponsor, and then I went to a therapy thing, and I. You still go to meetings? Yeah. Wow. Did you take ever take that uh, what called Viagra? Boy, Bi- Viagra. 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 Yeah, I've taken uh, it before. Does it help you? I'm trying to help. <laughs> He's, he, he's, he's, he, he's easing his way back into a, into a conversation. Bad. He's easing bad. his way into the conversation. I feel bad. Oh, he feels bad. Yeah, he the says solution, sincere. dude. The, dude, the solution is to not watch it anymore, and your brain automatic, automatically resets itself. Um, and let me ask you one question. Can, can you please, please ask okay. a question? Could you, could you put that? This is a nightmare. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna let you know. Sorry. It's, it's yeah, a living I nightmare. I owe you. All right. Okay. All right, go can, ahead. Can Whatever you, charity you want me to come, I'll do all right. it. Okay. If you have, you're in a hotel. The girl is nude. Can you put some porno on, watching it, and the same time doing it? Like if she was on top and you watched it from the side of her head. Yeah, but then it becomes unhealthy. The whole situation is not just an unhealthy long. situation, right? So it's like, you know, what I mean, I just feel like. Just get rid of the porn, and then it's just it's fixed itself. So I'm better now. You are? Yeah, I'm. I'm reset. I, you know. Oh, good. So now I, you know. I wake up. I get morning wood. You know. I don't need any kind of like visual stimula- stimulation to get get erect. You know what I mean? So just don't watch it. So what kind of porno did you get turned on by? I was watching. You know, your Three, average four guys. Three or four guys. Girls, <laughs> whatever. He has to did go you, there. Did you get, get that type of stuff going on? What what did it turn you on? I'm sorry. Bobby? I, I, said, I told you I'm it's sorry. Fine. It's fine. What did do? What kind of thing porno turn you on? I, you know, vaginas, whatever. No, Asian or... No, I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have an ethnic um, preference. preference. What about you, you? You get turned on by blonde. I know that. He no, didn't have don't. a blonde with him last year. My last week. girlfriend, remember Christine? Beautiful Hispanic oh, girl. Oh, man. The best. I, She's I, so I, I gotta tell you, smart. I got to tell you, that girl, she was something she else. She was something else. He yeah. always has a hot girl with him. No, but that was a real relationship. I dated her for years, you know? I love her. You lo- what's happened to her? If you love her, where is she now? I, I just can't be in a relationship right now. Because of what? Because of erection? No, it has nothing to do with because that. Because of erection. No, well, it, I don't it, no, know. Boy, no. do you not listen. No, I'm trying to he figure out. He said he's okay now. He has. A, but he it, had a girlfriend that time. Bobby Lee, I will make this up to you. Bobby, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get inside your head. He's, he's That's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get inside your head to see what click. I don't know. If I were you, I'd flip around for another podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no it's, it's, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's already oh. good. It's already good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. All right, Bobby. This go is, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right, please, all right, please go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Bobby. So um, anyway, that's, um, that's my thing with... Pornography, I just don't do it anymore. And a therapist told you this, or your your counselor? I have a friend. I didn't go through a therapy. But I have a friend that's a therapist. A very just said one, stay off it. And he just told me, I go, this is a thing going on. You know, this is a thing that kids have now. You might have it. A lot of people have it, and it's this. And it, he was right. You know, so that's interesting. Yeah, could well, I get it too? You think? Can you get it? Yeah. Get what? <laughs> I mean, because of his. Next you think you're gonna <laughs> catch it from yeah. him? Yeah. yeah it's I not. Guess. It's not like a. It's not disease. Ebola. It's not like a virus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a disease. No. It's, it's not a disease. No. It's, please, a, it's an please, illness. Please breathe the other way. <laughs> Not totally. Please breathe the other Why way. Why is it stink, my brother? No, because I don't want you to get your disease. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to get the, the, all of this. You, you, you know, it's, <sighs> it's, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't come from a, uh, like a, a cold or something. No, it's Yeah, doesn't. it comes from a cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch it too yeah, much yeah, porn. Yeah. I, I was so congested I had to watch, <laughs> had to watch all this porn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bobby, how many girls, really, seriously, how many girls the same time you had the sex with? The most you have ever had. At one time? Yeah. No, you, in orgy or something. You, I've I never been in orgy. I've never been in orgy. How many girls you had this in the same bedroom or something? How many girls have you had in the same bedroom? Yeah. I've been with one girl and a couple of guys. Yeah. <laughs> you serious? Yeah, I didn't nah. blow the guy. It was just one girl that... She, she that was, I don't want, I want to talk about it really. Oh, no, no. my God. I'm losing respect from you, Bobby. If you lose respect from him. <laughs> if you couldn't do, if you could, if you could. It was a long time ago. How long ago was that? It was, I'll tell you who it was, too. Who? Polly. Oh, really? Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my. Did I tell you what happened? Yeah, yeah. We were in Columbus, Ohio. I oh, think the we're, funny I was bone? opening for him at the Funny Bone. And a girl, I, this is, I was, must have been 20 seven years old there's a lot like 12 13 years ago and this girl liked me so she she was blowing me in his tour bus and he just walked in he goes what about me dude right and yeah, he yeah. just sat down and then she just went over to that so that was the experience she left to go for the other one yeah well, so he's, he's, a, he's a headliner <laughs> <laughs> oh because she was headliner. blowing middle act cock <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. So that, so did another guy walk in then? You said there was three. Two, there three. Was Warlock. You know, I don't know if you know Warlock. Oh, yeah, Warlock. Roger, yeah. Of course. Roger did it too late, later. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was gross. But was was she porno or something? No, she was a porno. I, no, she was just I don't know who she was. She was drunk? She was a fan. I don't remember, man. What are you looking at me like that for? Because it's just at that time I was opening for people, right? I was I would open for Polly and Carlos. Live, so if you open for me in the club, would you do? Would you bring your girl the same thing? I'll tell you how much time you got left. Oh no, oh no! I'm having a full blown panic attack right now. Are you really? Calm down, calm down. Smoke a cigarette. All right, so um, so that's the experience. It doesn't make me gay. I, I, I didn't think you were gay. Yeah. I never think you were gay. Okay. I joke around about you because yeah, yeah. I think... You know, Why? Because I do stuff like this and stuff? Stop! Um, He's allowed to do it. He's yeah. a guest. It's a guest. What do oh, you mean? Is relax. It just put your head back yeah, and open your relax, legs. Man. No. Open your legs. You're a open your legs real quick, man. You're a co-host, Jamie. <laughs> okay. Let, go, man. let the man touch relax. you. It's not gay. I think I found theater. The th I think I found the thing. Jamie, come back here. No, you can, I'm watching from here. You guys go talk. Well, come here. Sit on my lap. I'll talk oh, about it. Yeah. I sit in here. I found it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Um, what do you got coming up? You want to plug anything? No, I um no, I mean animal practice, and then uh, that's pretty much it. I um. NBC show. That's what I just said, Jamie. What's, what time He's not gone. He's not gone. What He's not gone. He's even. It's worse. You now. can't do it because now you're not even on mic. You know, he says, no, but. Right, come back here. Use the mic. I won't touch you again. But I'm afraid. Because if I don't touch you, you, you have Paulie Shore touch you. Paulie Shore didn't touch him. He didn't touch me. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to sit in here with Lisa. You guys go and go talk. He acts like that they can hear him. Yeah, you would think that he they knows. They can't hear you. All right. <sighs> it's, better, fun. Right? it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, yeah, you know, maybe in a year you come back. I, cr I guarantee I'll make sure he's in Chicago. How about you just don't air this one? I'll just come back. You don't, you don't want this? <laughs> no, to lap kidding. No, this is fun. They're gonna love it. Okay, Jimmy. I appreciate you coming back because you were up there when we were having that. You know what you told me once though too, and I, I will always remember it. You said stand up is the only job in show business where they can't really fire you. It's true. Yeah, where. And it, you're completely right because it's it, like you have to get fired 500 times. Oh, even even more, even yeah. sometimes, yeah. And because um, there's so many different club owners, there's so many different places to do it. And I really, you know, when you said that, I just thought at the time I was younger, so I didn't know really know what you meant. But yeah. it really is true because after, like if without stand up, I'd be fuck, I'd be broke. Me I would too. Be, I would be flat broke. I don't know what I'd do. Yeah, me either. I mean. The thing is, the good thing about the uh, well, that's negative is some of the club owners hate each other. So if one of them, well, they will keep you just to spite the other guy. Yeah. So you yeah, always yeah, get yeah. their competition going. I know. And now the fact that you're getting you know more and more popular and you can draw, forget it. You're, 
Yeah, it's always been great. It's like, you you know, Joel Backhoff from Florida. He's got five or six clubs. Yeah. Stroop books a bunch. You know what I mean? And you got all these guys. So it's like, you know, like I have a friend who was on a couple of TV shows and as a serious regular, like he was on billboards in town. And who's this? I can't say his name. And then because I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. And then maybe a couple of years ago, he had to get a job at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I went and visited him there, and he kind of pulled me aside. He goes, do you believe this? You know what I mean? And I would have had to do the same thing if I didn't do stand-up. I know. You know what I mean? And so I can just, I'll just go to Omaha, you know what I mean? And sure. make as much money as I would yeah. that, on TV, you know? So it's a real blessing. I got fired from a show that was written for me. <laughs> so I wasn't good enough to play myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I did that what? night? Two sets. You did. I didn't give up. I, you know, I didn't look back, and I, and they, they burnt in hell anyway. It was it was the pilot never even aired. It was so bad. Yeah. So it wasn't me. It was the writer. But yeah, it doesn't even matter. Tell me what. How did that? I want to know how that occurs. Well, I'll tell you. How, what, did, how does one get? You'll you'll relate exactly to it. Okay. Like because you know what it's like if people take you seriously. Yeah. Compared to they know they have to know you're fucking kidding. This guy saw my HBO special. And it was an HBO special where I started doing. I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because of that, the the, uh, the the I don't mean that in a bad way. It 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 mitigated the intensity of the anger. Like if I just if I just said something, and just mean, then I'm just an asshole. Yeah. Like, I don't mean that in a bad way. With all due respect, your sister's a slut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, let me. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, and so he wrote it totally mean. Without any charm or like a wink, like you know, Danny DeVito is a yeah, good example. Yeah. Whatever he did, whatever it is about his character, he can be obnoxious but somehow likable. You know, yeah. even, even James Gandolfini on The Sopranos, there was something people rooted for. This character had nothing you could root for. I knew it. Chris Albrecht at HBO said to me, he "Goes try and play up the jokes more." And I go, "Chris, what jokes?" Yeah. So in a way, it was a relief. They gave me fifty grand to let me go. And I went goodbye, and I went to fucking Slappy Bananas the next week, and I was happy. Yeah. You know? And then, they, and then uh, so it didn't hurt your feelings. Yeah, it hurt my feelings, but yeah. I, I, I knew that I had stand-up that night. Yeah. The emptiness of being an actor is you went from that high, that incredible high, I can't, yeah. to just a crash, you know, straight downhill to nothing. And you're looking at, and you're looking at the trades, and you're going, oh, fuck, I, I don't know I, if I want to do children's theater again. Yeah, you know? it's, it, it, this, it's a brutal, it's so brutal. It's brutal for actors. I mean, for us, we're lucky. We're I mean, so lucky. And there's only, uh, think about it this way. Uh, the NBA has maybe three, 350 players, maybe, that, that play in the NBA. There aren't even 350 headliners in the United States. So to get to the level that you're at now, not, not to be like a self-stroking thing, there, it's harder to, there's less, there's, you have more of a chance of making the NBA than you do as a, a comedian who makes over three hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow! You know, even yeah, though yeah. they make millions, but the, uh, the, the the numbers game. Like a friend of mine said to me, he's a neurosurgeon, and you think this is funny because I've been thinking I was, uh, about because uh, people go, "You have a friend who's a neurosurgeon?" Like I only hang out with like jugglers, <laughs> like psych, <laughs> unicyclists. My, yeah, my you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah, you you have a friend <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you, but. Uh, he said to me, you know, I, I could never do what you do. And, he said, and I said, yeah, but, but you know, I, uh, and, and in my act, I say, but you can kid around. I do a bit about it, but that, I don't want to do that. But he, 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 I realized, he said, there's, there's 10,000 neurosurgeons in the United States. He says, you're not going to tell me there's 10,000 uh, really great comedians. Yeah. And he's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're just lucky we have that, that talent. But I also want to say that it's not easy either though but when the, you go on the road no. at, at times it is it's stressful well, and, and you do have to put you know what i mean some work into it like of course but the thing about comedy is yeah. the better you get the easier you make it look so people nobody looks at like um lebron james dunking from the foul line and go fuck i could do that i just haven't had a chance right but when people see somebody being funny they go oh, i was that funny at my my cousin's christening I had them laughing. I had the whole family. Even my aunt that doesn't laugh, she laughed. Yeah. And they start, they get deluded into thinking it's a different thing that you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up is, is one of those things where you almost have to go through these um, metamorphoses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, in the beginning, you, you do your act like you saw someone on TV and you kind of mimic them, you know? Right. Yeah. And then a lot of times your material is so 
so much like other other people's material. And then eventually where you want to be is you're just completely yourself. But the only way that's to get I, there the way to work. is through failing yes. and, 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 and discovering it. It's so weird, the process. That was my whole goal is to get back to being myself, to being as funny on to the people that were strangers as I was with my friends. Yeah. You know, but it's not that easy. And it's not. you don't know whether to be a fast guy with a lot of energy or the slow guy or the Stephen Wright or this, you know. And Yeah, it's, it's confusing in the beginning. Like when yeah. I started, it was like Chris Tucker was the hot thing. Yeah, baby. Yeah, so I used to, you know what I mean, try to do it. But then I sounded like Urkel. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I'm not urban in, in, in any way. So I used to sound like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I would do the, uh, I try to do the sign, like what's Seinfeld thing, you know? And then I just now just talk the way I well, do, it, but it took me fucking 15 years. But to it's get so there. much more fun to be yourself than it is to be a hokey character. Because mm. once you're stuck like emo or dice or oh, any yeah, of those yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. they're stuck in that character. Like one thing about dice is and, and he, he deserves a lot of credit for his accomplishments. But as a stand up comedian, he's not very well respected. But to be stuck in that character at 65, you know, he doesn't have to. That's the thing is that he. He is an act. He can act, I think. I know. Yeah, he's I'm a talking, good. I'm talking about for stand up. I know, but even as a stand up, I feel like if he just went up as yeah. Andrew, whatever his last name was, I don't think he has him? the confidence. Uh, Silverstein. Silverstein, I yeah. Silverstein. I think if he just did that and just went up with a t shirt, you know but, what I mean? But it, nevertheless, you're glad that you went back to yourself. Yeah. Because now you can be, like, you know how you have those silly moments where you get behind the curtain or you just start going, but you still always go back to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, you're not like. When I first started, I was doing like a couple characters at the beginning, and I didn't know I couldn't follow them as myself. Mm. I did this guy who was like, I do to pinch a loaf, to cup a square. He talks like this, you know, and then this lounge comedian. You know, and but I getting back to myself was the hardest part, you know. Now yeah. I just, I, you know, thought, aren't you relaxed on stage now? I, I I incredibly am relaxed. Isn't that amazing? And I think what it has to do with this is that I don't. I think before when I was younger, I thought that there was going to be a means to an end, you know, that every show is going to um, affect the prize at the end of the tunnel, like, sorry, <laughs> well, Bobby, we're out of time, <laughs> hold that thought till the next podcast, you know, but sorry, I should now think. I know there's no end game that it's just, you just do it, you know, you know what I mean, like you, you know, you see all these kids go to Montreal, which I've never been, oh yeah, yeah, never been there, I didn't know you were never there, yeah, never there, I've never been to any festival, really. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't care, though. But the thing is, is that I was never invited to the cool, you know what I mean, thing, yeah. you know? So I just kind of just eventually just said, you know what? They're not going to want me anyway, so I'll just do what I do, you know? And it just, there is no prize. I just live in the moment. Hey, kid, you want to go to Montreal? Uncle Dom. Kill Kenny, consider it done. Yeah, I, you know, I, they did ask me this year to do it. Montreal? Yeah, and I just said no because um, I have so much. Isn't it great to be able to say no? No, to I people? only say no because I have so much resentment because of all the years they didn't ask me. Good, <laughs> fuck them. You know what I mean? That's the great thing. I just yeah. have this like resentment toward these people. I have resentment toward certain casting directors that won't call me in. You know what I mean? And I, a lot of times I think I just keep going to get them back or something. It's weird. Oh, I love it. You know, I have a hate box. I just hey, what do you? Do you kidding? have people in the hate box? Oh yeah. Oh my god, I have lists, man. I had a uh, these these two women came in here, and they said, "Don Marrero, we've been looking all over for you. How fucking hard is it to find me with my name on a marquee <laughs> at Sunset and World?" <laughs> yeah. And they and she said, uh, "We've been looking for you. Uh, we want you to read for a Tim Allen movie." And I said, "Oh, thanks." And I bought them a drink. And they said, "Yeah, we really like you to come in and read for Tim." And uh, and then I said, "Let me get you another drink." You know, because I, I knew what was coming and it, it sucked the power right out of them. Yeah. I said, uh, they said, so when can you come in? I said, look, I can't come in. I, I, I said, I appreciate it. Tell Tim I said hi, but I don't, I don't want to read. She goes, uh, you wouldn't read for Tim, but he wants you for the part. Just it's just a formality. Yeah. I said, no, I really wouldn't. And uh, she said, uh, but, you know, and, and I go, look, would Tim read for me? And she goes, well, no. I go, well, there's your answer. Wow, you, you know? said that? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. And you want to hear the funny part yeah. of the story? The, the, uh, uh, what's the guy's name from uh, Goodfellas? Who was Ray the, Liotta. Ray Liotta. I never met Ray. Yeah. All right? We're getting, they, Ray was the guy I was supposed to read with. And uh, they want to see if we had chemistry. Just by total coincidence, two weeks after this, Ray and I are converging onto a jetway 
going to West Palm Beach out of Dallas. He's got his little girl with me. I'm getting on the plane. We almost bump in and we say hi. So, you know, I, I think he, he, he seemed to recognize me, and apparently he did after our conversation. Yeah. But, of course, I recognized him. And I said, let me ask you, are you going to do that Tim Allen movie? Because he says, I don't know. He said, I said, they wanted to see if we had chemistry. And when I said chemistry, he did that laugh, like he did that really big fucking laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was chemistry. How could two fucking guidos like us not have chemistry? <laughs> get the fuck out, get out of here! Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought, how f- amazing yeah. that I would run into the guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he and, did. And, and, and the thing is, is that it's, it's, it's gatekeepers. Hollywood yeah. is full of one person that has all, you have to get through that person to get to everyone else. But they need that power to say yes or no. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I completely, like, if I had a movie, which, you know, hopefully maybe one day, I, I mean, I've been in movies, but my own movie, I hope that I can just say, I want Dom for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just have that happen because, you know what I mean? I know you, you know what I mean? And you're Dom Irera. But a lot of these people, they don't know anything. If you, if you like, you know what I mean? Well, they don't know who is who or what people have done or what kind of status they have, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, you did my show, Supreme yeah, Court yeah, of Yeah, yeah. And you were, the guy, they didn't know, listen, you were in very good company. Yeah. They didn't know Daniel Tosh, Russell Peters, Kindler, or you. No. Right? Yeah. So uh, I think somebody had seen you on Mad TV. I go, listen, I guarantee, the, they, bring, they want to bring in these old fucking guys. Great. But don't, you know, they were Tom Arnold. Yeah, yeah. You know, give me a fucking break. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I, I had, this isn't on, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, like I had to fight for, the, and, the, and all the guys I fought for were the best guys on the show. Yeah. You know? They oh, yeah. Imagine that, that, not hearing a, a fucking you, you four. I mean, even Kindler I can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you were on a fucking hit show for years, you know. But you know, yeah, that they're, gay, they're gatekeepers. Yeah. You know, and... There's one lady in town that she does all the big comedy movies. She will never see me. And, and you know what? I'm f- I'm over it. Who fine. is it? Allison? I can't tell. No, no. Allison? Allison loves me. Oh, okay. She's the only, uh, every movie I've done is through her. Oh, good. Allison Jones. No, I, I, I would literally stop in front of a bus without her. No movies. She, yeah. She, guess what she got me on? What? Golden Girls. No. Yes. The actual TV show? Yeah, yeah. She casted Golden Girls? Uh huh. No. I was on two episodes of Golden Girls, and I one of my lines was I was in a produce department. <laughs> I, I said, Nice melons. And Rue McClanahan goes, Thank you. Oh, really? It was like fucking <laughs> dirty jokes. Ooh. NBC primetime. Yeah. Tell him what you called B. Arthur, though. B. Arthur? Yeah. She was like, she was from uh, All in the Family. I know who she is. No, right? but I know. But I mean, I don't know. No, but I mean, this is a long time ago. She was like uh, playing, and then she got a show, a spinoff called Maud. And I, I saw her. But she's fucking gigantic with the yeah. big feet. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, she looks like a, like a one of those. Uh, tri- uh, I don't know, know what this was, but just I don't want to know what that okay. is. But just just keep doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, it's Scott LaRose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said to her, I forgot her name for a second. I look up at her and I go. Uh, hi, Bo. I call her Bo. She goes, it's B, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, my hair blew back. Like, Sorry about that. Let me ask you this, though. Yes. Because hey, has this, has this fucking interview so gotten, it's, uh, I has know. it gone it's up? It's so good now. At levels? I know, and it, it's like we talk about real things. Though. Ooh. Yeah. But um, I love Jamie. He's the best club owner in the world. Jamie, he's not here, is he? He's, I love oh, you, he? Jamie. Yeah, I love you too, Jamie. Where is he? Upstairs, upstairs. Okay. Counting his money. Let me f- ask you this because, you know, I'm 40 now, all right? Yeah. And you're a little older than me. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just that's about six months. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's a lot in comedy. Because I feel like, you know, I'm single and I feel like it's dried up for me. Did you ever go through a dry period or am I? Well, I always, <laughs> I always irrigate my vagina. Oh, you do? Because, yes, I have yeah. a constant, like, you know, like in a, like in a, like in a, den- a dentist chair, that thing, the water, yeah, I have yeah. that. So I have a vagina on my side. I see, I get it. Did whatever dry out, the comedy or the women? The women. Like, because right now, it's been like a year where I haven't really had sex with anybody. Really? I made out with a couple of girls, but I just feel you like. You didn't have sex with that big chick? Which big chick? That was following you last week upstairs? You introduced me to her? No, 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 she, 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 that was a different, that's a weird. I'm going to hear the answer. Let's just. 
The answer, but from who? But the comedy obsession is from Oh. Wait, is, it, is that too personal of a question? No, we used to be married. You guys used to be married? You know what? Yeah, yeah. How so, long were you married for? Five years? So someday you'll come back and do the show. <laughs> and I would love Why to is it uncomfortable? Come. It's a little uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, can I ask you what happened? Yeah. You can, I can ask? Yeah, you can ask. Yeah, tell me what happened. <laughs> Not now. Oh, really? oh, Not now, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He still is very you, much in love with you, I can tell. Are you Jamie all of a sudden? No, am I, is it weird? I didn't, <laughs> no. had no idea that she was your ex-wife. How would you know? Why would I? I, I wouldn't even brought it up if I knew that this was going to occur. Now it's, you know, it's, it's fine. great. It's, 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 it's real. Springer now. It's real TV. Great. Yeah. It's lizard lick. Do you have children together? No, but my daughter is his daughter. Oh, that's right. That's how I know her. That's right. And, yeah, because I've seen you go to the comedy store with Dom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, oh, how, wh- how long ago did you guys, were you guys married? We're married in the, uh, what, what year did Casablanca come out? <laughs> <laughs> right after The Wizard of Oz. Uh, we, we did Hollywood Shuffle together. You, you guys were married then? Yeah, this, we got married right You can't talk when we're off, off mic like that. Yeah, you come back here. Come here. here. <laughs> hey, yeah. I was uncomfortable for 10 minutes. I want you to be uncomfortable for a second, okay? It's a okay. square deal. You gotta, you'll come back, though? Yeah, I'm going to come back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. We got married right after Hollywood Shuffle. Because we did Hollywood Shuffle yeah. in 86. I didn't realize that movie was almost all black. I would have been more, more frightened of them had I known. <laughs> no, that was like the first like, urban comedy movie that I'd ever seen. Oh, we had but seen. it wasn't urban because everyone in that, it was you were in it, uh, Damon... Keenan was in it. Spoon was w- in Rither- it. Yeah, Witherspoon was in it. Um, it th- just all these people had never... David Allen Greer, correct? No, he wasn't David in wasn't in it. He's not black enough. He's not black he enough? Sings, he yeah. sings too <laughs> much. Yeah. He sings in musicals. But as a kid from the suburbs, when you watch that movie... Because I'm from, like, white people. You know, I grew up in a community Where'd called... Where you grew up, Bob? In San Diego. But it was a community oh. called Green Valley. did I meet you at the comedy store in San Diego? Yeah, La Jolla. Oh, I was okay. a doorman then. I you on a summer cruise. <laughs> I'd never been on a summer cruise. Quel <laughs> dommage. So, um, and when I saw it, I was just like, this is one of the greatest things. Because it also opens it was your... It real, real comedy. I mean, yeah, it really... Were, I, no, so I really silly. do believe that it's real comedy. But you know, this, you know the story behind that. 90% of that movie was improvised. Because he basically would find a, a, a place and then say, here's what I want you... The, the whole casting scene when, when Dom and, and me and, the, and What's-His-Face... We're doing the casting. Yeah. Every we just single improvised. thing was improvised, except for a few scenes that he wrote. Oh, wow. Because it, but also the idea of the movie of an African-American actor auditioning for things and being stereotyped, yeah. which I just thought, wow, well, it's a little stretch, this and that. But by being in L.A. and when I first got here, yeah, yeah. and the things I used to audition... You know, they used to like put me in that rice paddy hat, yeah. climbing that tree with a machete, and then you're like, you know what I mean? Sure. S- these are your lines, mao, mao, and you're like, mao, mao, you know what I mean? And, right. Yeah, I things mean, like that, and we, you're like, well, I'd show up at an audition, and everyone would be dressed as like a ninja, yeah. with the mask and everything, and you're, I'm like this, and I'm going, what is this for, you know? Yeah, and, and you'd like to be judged on your talent, and then your ethnicity or, yeah. back, or racial background, but not... First. But what that's what's great about LA now though is because they've gotten the fact that like, you know, all TV shows and really movies exist because of selling products. It's basically everything is a gigantic commercial, right? Uh-huh. And they're trying to now reach everyone. So now they use every ethnicity. It's so much better for all people, I think. Television. I mean you look at shows now, it's like yeah. There's everybody in it, you know what I mean? And this is like, when I first came here, it wasn't like that. It was either white or black, and that's it. Maybe right. one Hispanic. You know what I mean? But um, Freddie Prince. Yeah, Freddie Prince. Oh, that's right. We're going to miss him. Did you know him? No. You never met him? Before my time. I wasn't a comedian yet. How was Sam? Sam Kennis? Yeah. I loved Sam. He was, you know. My favorite of all time. Oh, he was I mean, I, I, funny. Yeah. They I asked me one time. Uh, the New York Post, New York Daily News, not that it makes any difference. They asked me uh, who, <laughs> no, it was the Times. Uh, they asked me who, who, do you, who was the funniest out of, uh, or what, you know, you know, I thought between Sam Dice and Howard Stern. And I said, uh, Howard Stern is very bright, 
Dice has a great head of hair, and nobody could come close to Sam. Yeah. I mean, not even close. I mean, he was hilarious. I used to bless myself sometimes for some of the sacrilegious stuff because I don't want to be in a room when it blew up, you know. We but wouldn't yeah. go to a Halloween party that he invited. We were afraid to go to a Halloween party at his house. Well, they used to do some crazy shit. Oh, really? You would be afraid to go to his house? Why? On Halloween. On Halloween? That, yeah. that specific holiday? Yeah. Why? Because there was like actual vampires would show up? Or well, something? you know, there was just a lot of evil in his act, and I was like kind of, you know, woo. <laughs> You heard that the story about in the, in the uh, comedy store that he'd go on late at night and people would say they, they, they'd hear voices saying, he's here, he's here, he's here. Oh, like ghosts? Yeah, just voices. I don't know if they were ghosts oh. or what. Really, do you believe that? Huh? Do you believe that, 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 do you believe that comedy store is haunted? Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. felt it. I, I felt yeah, the I cold. Have, yeah, uh, yeah, I felt all that too. Definitely. It's the dark, it's a dark it's place. Yeah. It's a dark place for uh, having a, a place that has brought so much laughter and joy. There's something very. I think it has to do with the way it's painted. Well, I mean, black I isn't really, you know. But what I mean? it was, a love when, color. but it was Ciro's. I think there were some gangland hits, and in, in when it was Ciro's. Yeah, but like when I was, I lived, used to live with this roommate, and we were looking at colors to paint our rooms, <laughs> and um, there were just certain colors that are just not good. Like, I, I painted my room silver, and I kept, I felt claustrophobic, you know. And then later I found out that that's just not a good color because it. So I just don't think black, all black, everything black, and a little bit of pink. You know what I mean? No, it, she should have had one room that was black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that, that was like the, you know, the, the dirty, down dirty room, and then yeah. the rest of it normal. Normal, yeah, yeah. Just the whole place black. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people copied it, you know. They copied it in, in uh, London yeah. and in Australia. There's oh, a comedy did. store, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I know. I think it is, I think it is haunted. I, you know what I'm talking about? You know, this is the worst thing I saw there. One day, you know, the main room was dark. And I, I, I come around this corner, it was like 1.30 in the morning, right? And I see these legs, and some waitress had cut herself with shards of glass because the manager broke up with her. Wow. You know what I mean? I can't say the girl's name or the manager's name, but... Do um, I know her? Uh, you might, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. What? I know the waitress? It was like 14 years ago. Oh, you definitely knew the waitress. Yeah, yeah. 14 years ago. But like I and I used to watch like Eddie Griffin have sex with white girls in the girls' bathroom in the main room. Really? Yeah, yeah, and just weird, mm. weird things like that, you know. Which I'm from the, again the suburbs, and when you come to a city like this, and I'd never seen a transvestite before, you know what I mean, or midgets, or, or, or I never saw tra- <laughs> transvestite or midgets, it, you know what I mean, or anything like that. Like, so it was a big shock, you know. And now, you know, I have friends that are all kinds of people. I have friends that are transvestite midgets. <laughs> yeah. They go, hi. You're like, hi, Frank. Thank you for being on, man. I love you. Love Thank you, you too. Appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, man. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. See you next time. If she had only been up.